Hey everybody, it's me, Jack, and I'm back with another review. Today, I will be reviewing the newest installment in the Jurassic Park series, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Truth be told, I was planning to do a review of this movie when it first came out back in June, but I had trouble really coming up with my overall thoughts on the movie, so I had to see it some more times, and then I eventually waited for it to come out on Blu-ray and DVD. And now, I know exactly how I feel about the movie. Before I review this movie, I might as well talk about my thoughts on the other Jurassic Park movies. The first Jurassic Park is one of my favorite films of all time. The effects are still great even to this day, and the dinosaur scenes are some of the absolute best. But to top that off, there was also great characters, funny humor, good dialogue, and a really great message about not messing with science and nature. The sequel, despite not being as good, I, I still liked it. Yeah, I know a lot of people hate this one, but I don't. I actually really enjoy this movie. Granted, it has its fair share of problems. Some character decisions are rather dumb, and the character of Malcolm's daughter I did find rather annoying. And of course the scene where she kills a raptor with gymnastics is just stupid. But the film did try to be different from the first movie, this time having the movie take place on another island where the dinosaurs completely roam free without any fences or cages. Because Steven Spielberg directed this one, it had a lot of the stuff that made the first film great. Enjoyable characters, great suspense, and a really cool climax where the T-Rex rampages in San Diego. It's certainly not as good as the first, but in my opinion, it's the best out of all the sequels, and very underrated. Then there was the third movie, Jurassic Park 3. And this one, I definitely think, deserves the hate that it gets. This movie kind of sucks with an extremely lazy and predictable plot that only exists to make more money. The film was not without its merits. Sam and Neil was still fantastic as Alan Grant, but unfortunately the new characters were for the most part pretty bad. And while the Spinosaurus was a cool new addition to the franchise, why on earth did it have to kill the T-Rex? The T-Rex is the greatest dinosaur of all time. Why would you do this? The film can still be enjoyable if you turn off your brain, but yeah, it was a major disappointment. And it's no wonder that this was the film that killed the franchise for years. But then the franchise was brought back in 2015 with Jurassic World, and it was quite the improvement. With better characters and a more interesting plot that did change things up a bit, by opening up the park for the first time and having the very first hybrid dinosaur in the Indominus Rex. As usual, there were problems, those two kids were annoying as all hell, and the subplot about weaponizing the dinosaurs was just dumb. But overall, it was an enjoyable ride. And now we have the fifth film, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. After the events of the first Jurassic World, a volcano is about to erupt on the island. So the two main characters from the first Jurassic World, Claire and Owen, go in to rescue the dinosaurs and bring them to another island somewhere else in the middle of the ocean. However, it turns out that a bunch of corporate scumbags have their own agendas as they want to use the dinosaurs as weapons. So what do I think of this new Jurassic Park movie? Well, in short, I liked it. Yeah, I thought this movie was fun. There were definitely problems, however, that prevented it from being as good as the original, or even The Lost World. Let's first go through the characters. Chris Pratt returns as the character of Owen, and he is very enjoyable. Chris Pratt is a very fun actor. Granted, he isn't allowed to be as funny in this as he is in something like Guardians of the Galaxy, but he's still a likable lead. Probably the best part of both of these Jurassic World movies is his relationship with the Velociraptor Blue. I like the almost father-daughter bond that they share. There's some nice heartwarming scenes where we see Owen and Baby Blue together. These scenes are really sweet. Much like the first Jurassic World, however, there isn't really that much else to his character. He stays mainly the same person throughout the majority of the film. There's the character of Claire, played by Bryce Dallas Howard. Her character certainly went through quite a transformation between this and the original Jurassic World. In that film, she was all business and nothing else. She didn't really care about the dinosaurs and always referred to them as nothing but assets. But through seeing some of them die in the first movie, she grew to care about them. And now in this movie, she leads an organization that wants to help save the dinosaurs from the 
volcano. Some people criticize her character in this movie for being the complete opposite of what she was in the original, but besides showing some of her transformation in that movie, there is a time jump between the first movie and this movie. So, at least for me, it shows that over time she's grown to care for the dinosaurs even more. Much like Owen, however, she doesn't really have much of an arc. In the first movie, she actually did. In this one, she stays largely the same person throughout the whole movie. These two characters are likable enough. I definitely want to see them survive, but there definitely could have been much more to them. Now let's get into some of the new characters. We have some new sidekick characters, like Franklin Webb, whose character is essentially that he's a giant coward. I will admit that he did have some legitimately funny moments in the movie, but there were other moments that made me want him to just leave particularly when he's screaming. He's certainly not as bad as the Kirbys from Jurassic Park 3. Dear Lord, I could not stand those people. But at times he does come close. The character of Zia Rodriguez is okay. She definitely is strong and independent, but there really isn't much else to her character outside of that. Of course, we also have to talk about the villains. The main antagonist is Eli Mills, played by Rafe Spall. I have to say... I really like him in this role. Eli Mills doesn't strike me as just a downright evil guy. He's actually kind of likable. He's very charming and friendly, and he comes off like someone you could trust. And he didn't seem full-on one-dimensional. He just struck me as a normal businessman trying to make a living. Granted, he wanted to make a living by doing something extremely stupid, and we'll get to that later. At the very least, he had charisma. And unlike some other Jurassic Park villains like Hoskins or Nedry, he didn't strike me as as just evil the minute I saw him. There's also another businessman played by Toby Jones, and he is very obviously the villain. His acting is rather hammy, but he isn't really in the film that much. There's also the character of Ken Wheatley, played by Ted Levine. I'll admit, when it was announced that Ted Levine was going to be in this movie, I was excited. I loved him in Silence of the Lambs, and I was really excited to see him in a franchise that means so much to me. He does do a very good job. He's an extremely greedy character, constantly bitching and moaning about how he wants his bonus. And he makes a hobby out of collecting dinosaur teeth. He has some really great moments, like when he tranquilizes Owen and then pretends to blow him down. That was really great. That being said, even his character, I think, could have been even more despicable. More like Peter Stormare's character in The Lost World. God, I hated that guy so much, but I love to hate him. Also, his death scene. Yeah, let's talk about his death scene. It happens at the end when he comes across the Indoraptor, another hybrid dinosaur. Like a complete idiot, he decides to knock it out with a tranquilizer and steal one of its teeth. Yeah, that's a good idea. Attack this dinosaur that you know nothing about and steal its teeth. I'm sure you'll get your bonus now. But that's not all. He opens the cage door and doesn't lock it. I remember when I saw this in the theater, I actually face palmed. As for the rest of the characters in this movie, we have Benjamin Lockwood, played by James Cromwell. His character was once a friend of John Hammond's, but eventually they were driven apart when Lockwood did something that Hammond didn't like. James Cromwell is fantastic in this movie. He has the same charm and kindness that made Richard Attenborough so great in the original. I do wish we could have seen more of him. There's also the character of his daughter, Macy Lockwood. Every single Jurassic Park movie has at least one child character and they've been a very mixed bag. I liked Tim and Lex in the first Jurassic Park. I did not like Malcolm's daughter at all in the second Jurassic Park. The kid in Jurassic Park 3, Eric, I actually really liked. I thought he was one of the better parts of that movie. He was very clever and didn't always need to be saved. He could take care of himself very well. And then there were the kids in Jurassic World, and I f***ing hate them. Okay, the younger brother isn't as bad, but by God, the older brother was such a dick. And so irresponsible. I was honestly rooting for the Indominus Rex to kill him. I hated him so much. But Macy Lockwood? I like her. I think she's a very likable character. Of course, we have the big twist at the end. It turns out that she is actually a clone of Lockwood's daughter, who died in a car crash years ago. This was a legitimately interesting idea, and it adds something really interesting to the Jurassic Park lore. Especially the fact that John Hammond thought this was too much and left Lockwood because of it. And the girl that they got to play her is really good. I hope she does more in the future. Of course, there is the big moment at the end when she frees the dinosaur. This moment gets a lot of hate and criticism. I can definitely understand why. 
I mean, what person in their right mind would release a bunch of dangerous creatures onto the mainland? Well, there are a couple of defenses that I will make. First of all, the line that she says about how they're alive like her, well, yeah, kind of cheesy, does make sense. She's a clone like they are, and so she does feel somewhat of a connection to them in that regard. Also, another thing is, she's a kid. Kids do make a lot of dumb decisions without really thinking about them. So yeah, I understand why people don't like this moment, but for me, it didn't bother me that much. Jeff Goldblum appears in this movie as Dr. Malcolm for like... A minute and then he's gone. He appears at the beginning and at the end of the movie talking in court about science and how we shouldn't mess with it and yada yada yada. I'm glad that they brought back a fan favorite character from the original Jurassic Park even if it was just a cameo. That was something that was missing from the first Jurassic World. I mean you got that Dr. Wu guy but he was in one scene in the original and had like three lines. Anyway I do wish that Malcolm could have played more of a role in this movie. I mean you don't need to have him take over the movie. You can focus on the new characters, but I just think they should have given him a bit more of a purpose. But he did do a good job for the minimal screen time that he has. Speaking of Dr. Wu, he appears in this film again, and I do actually like what they do with him. In the last Jurassic World, they made him into sort of a villain character, but in this one he's more of the voice of reason among the movie's villains. He creates another hybrid called the Indoraptor, but remembers what happened with the Indominus Rex, and tries to convince Mills to not use use it as a weapon. Now let's talk about the dinosaurs of this movie. Now pretty much the highlight of any Jurassic Park movie is the dinosaurs and in this film they're awesome as ever. We get some of the fan favorites obviously like the Velociraptor. Well this film we only have one Velociraptor in the form of Blue but Blue is awesome and she is one of the best aspects of this movie and the last film. She is easily my favorite Velociraptor in the series. Despite not talking she definitely has a personality. She's much more unpredictable predictable than the other raptors. She can be friendly and understanding, but she can also be ferocious and crazy. A lot of people don't like the fact that they turned the Velociraptor into a good guy, because in the earlier films the Velociraptors were really the villains, but I do kind of like this. It shows that these aren't mindless monsters, they are creatures and they are capable of having feelings. As for the other dinosaurs of the movie, we of course have the T-Rex, who does have some pretty awesome scenes. The opening scene where it chases a guy across the island at night while it's raining is very scary. It's classic Jurassic Park. Uh, classic Jurassic. You see what I did there? Uh, that sucked. Sorry. There's also the scene where it kills the Carnotaurus and roars. This is an awesome scene, despite the fact that they showed it in the trailers. I will admit the T-Rex isn't in this one as much as some of the other films, but I don't totally mind this. Granted, the T-Rex is my absolute favorite dinosaur, but we have seen her a lot before. So I understand why she wasn't in this film as much. But again, she still has some more good moments, like the scene where they're trying to get blood from her, or the scene where she kills Eli Mills. We have some returning dinosaurs, like Stegosaurus, Triceratops, Ankylosaurus, and so on and so forth. But we also get some new ones that fans have been asking for for a while. We get the Baryonyx, which is a lot like Spinosaurus, except no spine. The scene where it attacks Franklin and Claire is a very exciting scene, with the lava falling all over the place and burning it. They're climbing up the ladder to try to get out. It's a good scene. We also get the Carnotaurus. Unfortunately, however, it is killed by the T-Rex rather quickly. And as much as I do love the T-Rex, I have to say they should have given the Carnotaurus more screen time. I mean, the T-Rex will always be my favorite, but we've seen her a lot. We need some new carnivorous dinosaurs. We get the Allosaurus, who appears briefly during the volcano eruption, turns to our characters, and then gets knocked out. And then we see another one briefly during the auction scene, and another one briefly at the end, and that's it. I mean, come on, Allosaurus is awesome. Before T-Rex was discovered, it was believed to be the largest carnivorous dinosaur. And I like this design as well. It doesn't just look like a small T-Rex, it actually has the crests that the Allosaurus is known to have. There's also the Stiggy Moloch, one of the dome-headed dinosaurs, that has a pretty awesome scene near the end of the movie, where it breaks Owen and Claire out of their cells, and goes on a rampage at the auction. That was a really fun, awesome scene, and a good way to make use of that dinosaur. But of course we have to talk about the big new dinosaur of this movie, the Indoraptor. And I don't really like it that much. It just feels like a smaller, less threatening version of the Indominus Rex, and that's 
basically what it is. It's just another hybrid dinosaur. The Indominus Rex was a legitimately cool creature. A hybrid dinosaur with the combined genes of several of our favorite creatures. It had the size and strength of the T-Rex and the intelligence of the Velociraptor. It also was very important to the plot of the movie. It was the main antagonist. And it got a lot of screen time. The Indoraptor, on the other hand, is just a lazy clone. It's another hybrid, except this time it's more like a raptor than a T-Rex. And it's only introduced in the last third, so we don't really get to see it that much. It's essentially just there to give this movie a climax. That's it. It chases them around Lockwood's mansion for a while, and then it dies by being impaled on top of a Triceratops skull. The creators have said that this is the last hybrid in the Jurassic Park franchise, and I think that is for the best. But yeah, this was just a very unnecessary addition. Now let's talk about this film's story as well. The first half of the movie plays out like a disaster movie with the giant volcano destroying the island, and then in the second half it becomes a completely different movie. Now, I gotta say, I loved the pacing of the first half of this movie. While the first Jurassic World had a rather slow pace in the first half, this one gets going very fast. They get to the island really early in the movie, and I was all for it. I was like, great, this time we don't have to bother with too much setup. We can just jump right into the action. And pretty much everything that happens on the island is awesome. It's extremely fun and exciting. However, once they leave the island, the pacing slows down enormously. They end up being locked up inside of the Lockwood estate, and the businessmen start auctioning off the dinosaurs to warlords. And that is really stupid. I mean, who on earth would use a dinosaur for warfare? Seriously. I mean, it's been shown that the dinosaurs are very hard to control. Now, it makes sense why they need Blue, because they can use her DNA to create hybrid dinosaurs that are compliant, like she is. But what about all these other dinosaurs? Surely they aren't just going to obey whatever these warlords want them to do. It didn't make any sense in the first Jurassic World, nor did it make any sense in this film. The big issue with these scenes at the Lockwood Estate is that they're just extremely slow paced compared to the first half of this movie. The first Jurassic Park had a very slow first act, yes, and it made sense there. You got to know all the characters, you got to know the park, and then in the second half the shit hits the fan and it becomes a really fun, exciting monster movie. In this film, making the first half exciting and fast-paced while making the second half much more slower-paced really makes no sense, because the scene with the erupting volcano is by far the best action set piece in the entire film, and it's only in the first half. Everything after that feels like somewhat of a downgrade. Still entertaining, but not quite as exciting. When they're inside the mansion, the plot just slows down, and they start auctioning off the dinosaurs, and you're just sort of waiting for things to get going again. However, I will say that the scenes at the Lockwood Manor don't drag as much on my second, third, and fourth viewings of the movie as they did on my first viewing of the film. And when they do get to the climax with the Indoraptor, it is... Fun. Something that I must commend about this movie is the direction. J.A. Bayona, who directed The Impossible, directs this film very well. He manages to bring back a lot of the horror and the suspense that made the first two Jurassic Park films great, and that were lacking in Jurassic Park 3 and Jurassic World, in my opinion. The whole sequence with the Indoraptor really feels like a horror movie. There are a lot of very quiet moments and then some great jump scares. It reminded me a lot of the kitchen scene from the first Jurassic Park. And while the Indoraptor was killed off too early, in my opinion, it still died in a really gruesome and interesting way, being impaled on top of the horns of a Triceratops skull. And it's a great idea. A hybrid dinosaur is killed by the skull of a real dinosaur that once lived. The special effects for this movie are fantastic. I really appreciate that, despite this movie coming out years later, they're still using a lot of animatronics. As impressive as CGI can be, when you do it up close, it's rather obvious that it is CGI. So I appreciate that for many of these up-close shots of the dinosaurs, they use something that is actually there, an animatronic. Plus, it gives the actors something to work with. I'm sure Stan Winston would have been proud. 
So yeah, I have some very conflicting thoughts about this movie. There are things I like and things I don't like. But let me just say that overall, I do enjoy this movie for what it is. It's certainly not as good as the first two Jurassic Park movies, but it is still leaps and bounds better than Jurassic Park 3. I still do think that it is a fun entry in the franchise. I just think there were some storytelling tweaks that could have been made to make it even better. But the acting is good, the characters are likable, the action scenes are fun, the special effects are damn impressive, Impressive, and the ending left me extremely excited for the next Jurassic World. So overall, I do enjoy this movie. It's flawed, but I still do think it is a lot of fun. And I will give Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom a 7 out of 10.